Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 148 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of protected left main CTO intervention. The patient presented with a severe class 3 angina despite medical therapy and had previous coronary bypass with Lima 2LAD and vein graft 2M that had occluded. He had an osteal left main CTO that had also significant calcification. The Lima was patent supplying the mid LAD. There was, there was however significant disease in the proximal LAD, again a very heavily calcified vessel, as well as at the origin of the circumflex. Therefore, the flow into this large obtuse national branch was coming mainly through epicardial collaterals from the distal LAD. So we have the Lima 2 LAD, epicardial collaterals to the obtuse marginal branch, and CTO of the circumflex and the left main. The right coronary artery was patent and was also providing some epicardial collaterals to the distal circumflex. Therefore, the culprit lesion for the patient's angina was the CTO of the circumflex. It, the left main had a blunt proximal cap. There was severe calcification. The length was about 30 to 40 millimeters. Distal vessel was of good quality. And the collaterals were mainly epicardial that was not interventional. Therefore, the plan was to try first with wire escalation, follow with undergrade dissection and reentry, and then use retrograde through the lima only as the last resort, given the potential risks of compromising flow through the main vessel supplying the coronary circulation. Going through the left main of the circumflex was quite challenging and required multiple microcasters and guide wires, uh, including uh, Confianza Pro 12 as well as um, uh, Filter XT and Pilot 200. After multiple attempts, the wire finally advanced subintimally into the course of the circumflex, as shown by injection through the Lima. We did have a bilateral femoral axis with eight friends EBU on the left and six friends um, guide uh, for the internal mammary graft. And then again, after multiple attempts, uh, the wire does seem to follow along the course of the obtuse marginal branch that was the main branch supplied through the epicardial collateral. So this is a very appealing location for attempting re-entry. This was done using the stick and swap technique. A stingray balloon was delivered distal to the distal cap. And then we did the stick with a stingray wire. And then that creates a fenestration in the true lumen and then used a pilot 200 to wire into the distal true lumen. And that was successful. So this is the stingray balloon and uh, the exit point that points to the true lumen is actually proximal to the proximal marker. And this is the Pilot 200 guide wire that on two projections is into the distal true lumen. Dual injection and dual projections are very important for confirming wire position because sometimes the wire can be in a subintimal course that is not appreciated if only one projection is performed. After this, uh, the Pilot was changed for a workhorse guide wire and drag eluting stents were placed all the way from the obtuse marginal to the ostium of the left main. And this provided a nice final result with TIMI3 flow into the first obtuse marginal. Interestingly enough, an earlier small marginal branch actually remained patent despite the dissection reentry technique used for canalizing the vessel. So conclusions here. One is that for navigating through tortuous and calcified segments using undergrade dissection reentry techniques with um, Knuckled guide wires can be very useful and probably safer than un advancing guide wires. And the second is uh, for uh, uh, gu guide wire entering the subminimal position, using the stingray balloon and the stick and swap technique can facilitate distal reentry. Thank you.